moving applications to Amazon Web Services. If you've been playing with Amazon Web Services, it won't take you too long to realize just how powerful and effective AWS can be. So you've drank the Kool-Aid, you're ready to go, you're thinking, how do I move the applications that are running in my local business or in my local data center up into the Amazon Web Services cloud? Well, first off, realize it does not have to be an all-or-nothing sort of move. Uh, CBT Nuggets, which is the company I train for, has moved their entire infrastructure to run out of Amazon Web Services, and it took them more than a year to do that. What they did is, number one, build a cloud strategy. What that means is to identify the applications that you want to move. Those applications can be broken up into many different pieces. The no-brainer ones are the ones that you want to move first. Now, Jeremy, what do you mean by a no-brainer application? I'm talking about like image libraries. Maybe you go to a website, you got some static images on that website when you go there. Uh, move those up first. Host the images out of Amazon Web Services. Start using uh, CloudFront to distribute them around the world so you get some great response time out of them. Uh, maybe you have a download uh, library where you've got uh, a, a client that installs or, or uh, some patches that might download from your website. Put those downloads in Amazon Web Services. Doing that will start giving you experience with Amazon Web Services so that when you do start moving the more phase migration applications, meaning the bigger ones, the things that take more thought, they might take more than a weekend to do, you'll already have a lot of the groundwork laid, at least in learning what Amazon Web Services is all about, how to use the tools. Of course, before you do any of this, do a culture check. You can tinker with Amazon Web Services all day long, but if you bring it into the boardroom and you say, hey, I think we can save money, and, and, and the CEO says, I'm sorry, that's just not our, where we're going to go. We're not making that move. Then that shuts the whole project down right there. So check the culture and do a cost analysis. We'll come back to the cost analysis in just a second. Let's get practical with moving your first application. Number one, you need to identify what that application is and its requirements because you want to be able to align it with the AWS building blocks. Now, what does that mean? When you go to Amazon Web Services, this is what you see. These are what I call the building blocks of Amazon. So we've got a relational database services. So maybe you start thinking, okay, well, I could run MySQL myself, or I could run Oracle or SQL Server, or you know what? Amazon could do a pretty good job of taking care of that for me. So they can worry about the patching. They can worry about multi-availability zone, hosting it out of multi-data centers. They can worry about making sure that it's redundant and up all the time. And, and I, it's just something I don't have to think about anymore. And you know what? I, I, I want to re-engineer our application to start using the simple queue service because then I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to have a server that's dedicated to queue messages for, for videos that need to be transcoded or emails that need to be sent and manage that queue. Uh, or you know what? I'm tired of hosting our own... Uh, DNS service. Why don't I use Route 53, which is worldwide? And you get the point. These are, I mean, this is what makes Amazon Web Services Amazon Web Services. So you start looking at the application and saying, do I have alignment with different building blocks where I can start making that application more effective, more scalable, more redundant, more and more? You get, get my point, right? So you, you start breaking it apart and aligning it with those building blocks, but also keeping in mind that you might have some configuration tools, resource management tools that you want to bring along with you. I'll give you an example. Uh, I use a monitoring tool called PRTG. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. It monitors everything that I need. It restarts services. It sounds alarm. And then I look at Amazon Web Services and I see CloudWatch. And I go, okay, well, it's kind of an overlap. Do I, do I want to use them both? Well, not really. I, I want to figure out how I can use PRTG with Amazon Web Services. And you can do that, by the way. Uh, so, so I might take my existing configuration tools, tools and bring them along with me. Other times, I might replace them with what Amazon's got. Big one. <laughs> define completion, define success. Before you ever move file number one, identify what it looks like to be successful. You and I know scope creep becomes a major problem and you start moving this first application and you're like, oh yeah, wait a sec, it relies on such and such and such. We got to move that too. Uh, okay, so we mo start moving that. And before long, <laughs> I mean, you're moving, you're moving everything, you know, and, and, and not realizing where the end of this road is, even when you do have everything moved, it's not optimized the right way. So make it clean, create a project plan, define what the end looks like of this move.
Now let's come back to the cost. I moved this here because once you identify what AWS services you want to use, then you'll be able to calculate the cost quite well. You learn pretty quickly in Amazon Web Services that there's a price for everything. It's always very small, very trivial, but if you move all these little small trivial hourly tasks and hourly rates uh, and put them into one big lump, you can say, wow, okay, this does have a cost to do this. So chances are pretty good that you're going to come under the cost of what you are paying to do it yourself, of buying servers, of buying routers and switches and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, maintaining support agreements, yada, yada. You know what I mean, right? So so you're probably going to come under the cost, but can I, can I remind you that it's not just about the dollar to dollar comparison. Okay, so let's let's just say uh, that you've got your own data center. You've already made the investment in a whole bunch of equipment, and so you're 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 saying, okay, well, it's coming out about equal, right? AWS uh, with a with a funky W and me in my own data center, we come out about equal, or maybe AWS is a little less, or maybe I'm a little less, whatever. So so back up a little bit and start saying, it's not just about the dollars. It's about the fact that I don't have to go in and look at the blinking lights on my server anymore. I don't have to get the alarm at five in the morning saying, uh, raid five, you've lost the drive, run now, you know, and pray that you don't lose the whole array when you replace that drive. I don't have to, you, you see what I mean? I don't have to have uh, staff who's an expert in firewall management because Amazon manages the firewall now. I don't have to think about connecting switches and buying patch cable. Okay, you know where I'm going with this, right? It's not just about a flat dollars like, okay, Amazon equals this much a month and, and running it myself equals this much a month. There's a whole intangible cost that goes into you focusing on building the business, building the services that your company offers instead of just maintaining an infrastructure. And that's the weird thing about Amazon Web Services is it totally changes the paradigm of an IT guy. An IT guy advances the company now instead of just keeping the thing running. Now it's time to do a proof of concept. That just means you're going to move something, something real into the cloud. Now, when I say real, I mean real being, it could be a personal blog where you talk about lizards. Uh, it could be the uh, test site or beta site or, or uh, next phased uh, site for your company's application. Uh, it just has to be something real that you can prove that it works because this is going to answer a ton of stuff. It's going to help you learn how to work with Amazon Web Services, get your feet wet with, this is the key, no risk. You don't want to make your company's bread and butter applications, the ones that you're trying out in Amazon Web Services, uh, at least from a uh, test perspective. I mean, it, maybe it is the application, but it's a copy of it. Uh, so this lets you validate that everything's going to work, and I, I guarantee you're going to learn a ton in doing that. So you get to the point where you migrate the data. How do you get the data from your business into the cloud? Well, depending on how much data you could transfer it over the internet. I mean, with today's internet connections, I mean, you could do that with a terabyte of, of data uh, and not bad an eye, but you might also look and say, well, it's going to take too long. There's going to be too much of a drift and cutover points and all that. So AWS has import export where you can ship in a, a little you know, drive or maybe a, an entire array of drive, like a little NAS that, that has 40 terabytes of data and their engineers will import all of that for you. Matter of fact, you can even create uh, virtual machines in VMware and convert those into AMIs and, and thus running instances when they're in the cloud. Uh, there's also third parties that help you move data, uh, Aspera, Riverbed, uh, others that, that uh, they have processes that you can walk through, tools that they use online. Uh, whichever one of these methods you can use, they can all get your data from your location into AWS. Now we come to the fun part, getting the application actually working in the cloud. This is where you import your virtual machines if you brought some from VMware and, and shipped them off to the cloud. Build your Amazon machine images, your essentially hard drives on ice, the base that you build from, and start running your instances, and then deploy the supporting infrastructure, all the AWS services that we started looking at in that web GUI uh, to support your application. And, and I mean, this is really where the time comes in to make sure it's all going to work well. Now, implement it, start thinking about it based on the cloud capabilities like elasticity, the ability to uh, shrink or grow your infrastructure based on the demand on the fly. Bootstrapping, configuring those hard drives, those AMIs that as they boot, they really learn what they are and join your infrastructure to support it in some way. 
auto scaling where you're starting to monitor based on time of day and bringing more servers up or down and based on load of your infrastructure so that it can meet the demand. I mean, beauty of Amazon Web Services, you can scale to thousands of servers and back down to nothing in a matter of minutes. And then finally, security just goes without saying. There's a ton of security that's necessary. Even though AWS has passed just about every security accreditation that exists, it's a shared security model. They do not secure your operating system. So you and I have to make sure that our virtual machines are secure within themselves running from the cloud. Of course, from there, once we have it running, now we can optimize. Now you can just do it better, better, more scalable, more flexible with, with the demand that requires spanning more data centers, faster response time. That's what AWS is all about. There's so much more that I could say, but hopefully this gives you enough to really, this is what I would suggest, to take this to the whiteboard. Go to your, your conference room or wherever you have a whiteboard in the company, sit with a couple guys and just start brainstorming for hours. Honestly, that's so much fun. Just start identifying applications and start getting the conversations. Go, oh, we could move that this way. I bet you we could, you know, you just start drawing arrows and boxes. You know what it's like, right? Uh, to really plan out a move like this. Well, I would encourage you, this is a taste test of some of what we have at CBT Nuggets. We have multiple series, AWS certifications, all kinds of things over at CBT Nuggets. Uh, come on over, check it out. My name is Jeremy Chara. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.